Hello everyone. I hope you guys are joining me for Bible study tonight. Now we're going to start off. I'm going to ask you randomly through the Bible study about the verses that I asked you guys to remember. I asked you to remember one from Philippians, one from Hebrews, and one from Proverbs through the course of some Bible studies. Two last night and one the night before, I believe. And um, I'm going to ask you randomly throughout the videos what verses, okay? You don't have to remember like exactly Hebrews 13, 8 says this. this. This to help you remember it, to say this is the verse I'm remembering from Hebrews. When you hear Hebrews, then you think of that verse automatically. When you hear Philippians, you remember that verse. When you hear Proverbs, you remember that verse. Just to help out to, you know, get to know it well and then you can... Put the numbers by it if you want or however way makes it easier for you. So starting out the Bible video, the Bible study, I'm going to ask you the verse that I asked you to remember. One of the verses I asked you to remember yesterday. And what does Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 say? So what is your verse you're supposed to remember for Hebrews, guys? Go. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember that. You always need to know that throughout your life. Things will change. Everything will change. Who comes in your life, who goes in your life, where you live, what you look like. So many things are going to change in your life. Everything changes. The only thing that does not change is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never, ever change on you, ever. No matter how old you get, no matter where you move to, no matter what happens in your life, Jesus is always the same. He's the same as when you were born, as when you're going to die. And he's right there for you. God knit you together in your mother's womb. That's a psalm by David. It's in one of his beautiful psalms. God knit you together in your mother's womb. He made you look like what you look like. He wants you to look that way for a certain reason. Do you look like your mom? Do you look like your dad? Do you look like no one in your family? Look at me. I've always felt so horrible about myself. I've always just been told horrible things about myself. And so I've always felt horrible about myself. Nobody, and I mean nobody, in my family has red hair. No one has green eyes. I'm the only one with red hair and green eyes. Everybody else has blue eyes except for my aunt who has brown eyes because her dad had brown eyes. But everybody else has blue eyes and either black hair, dark brown hair, or sandish colored or blonde. I'm the only one with red hair and the only one with green eyes. And I'm the fat one. I'm the one with a bunch of medical problems. You know, I'm the one that's always the awkward one, the shy one, the one that can never make friends, the one that was always afraid to do everything. I've never been like anybody in my family, never looked like anybody in my family, and that's always made me feel, you know, alone. But God made me this way for a reason, just like he made you that way for a reason, what, however you look. I see so many people, I'll see people born and they'll grow up, their mother will be beautiful and they'll grow up looking just like their mother. Just to, like they could be sisters. My cousin and her daughter's that way. You can't tell them apart. One of them was a nurse to me in the ER one time and I didn't know if it was the daughter, my cousin or her, or my second cousin, her daughter. That's how much they look alike. And I'll see little boys born that they grow up looking just like their dads. That you couldn't tell them apart, you know, you can tell that's definitely their kid. And it makes me so jealous. It's always made me so jealous. I know that's a sad thing to say, but it is, it's the truth. I've always been jealous. And I've, I dyed my hair black before, and I loved it. But everybody said I looked awful with black hair. I've dyed it blonde. Everybody wants me to leave it red, but I've always hated my red hair. Because I've never looked like anybody in my family. I've always been made fun of for my red hair, so I wanted contacts, but I never got them to change my eye color. So my aunt's always like, God made you that way for a reason. You're not supposed to look different. 
So I finally just accepted the way that I look. My red hair and my green eyes. Not so much my fatness. That's been a battle all my life. It's kind of hard when you got chronic illnesses that help stand in the way of that. That makes it even harder, but... Can't never stop trying. I'm much smaller than what I was. I've lost a lot of weight compared to what I have. And before I wasn't able to do anything. I just sat there in my chair. Never go anywhere. Never do anything like this. Because I never had the energy. I was always embarrassed. But now I can do stuff like that. I still can't do other things. But, you know, at least I'm better with certain things than I was. Some other health things are worse. But, you know, that's just how it goes. Everything's for a reason. Anyway. Why am I talking about myself? I don't know. I don't know how we got on this subject. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I can just rattle on and on. So I, I apologize. Sleep in here. You be quiet. You didn't want to come in here and join us. I was going to sleep in here. You behave. Play your Yahtzee game. I tried to get Sherm to join us for Bible study, but he won't. Okay, so today we are going to be reading Philippians chapter 4. Um, I'm going to be reading all of it, of course, which is very short. Philippians chapter 4 is actually the last chapter of Philippians. It's a very short chapter. But right now I'm going to read to you Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. Well, 12 and 13. And it says, I know what it is to be in need. So true. <laughs> Little thing you might not know about Sherman and I, but we've been homeless before. And I know what it is to have plenty. This is Paul saying this, because I remember him saying this. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. All right, guys, you know, your verse you're supposed to remember from Philippians is in this as well. Chapter 4, verse 13, guys. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So I may ask that during the video here. So remember your Philippians um, reading. You're supposed to remember your verse. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength, which is Jesus. Don't let the devil be your strength. That's not the kind of strength you want. And trust me, where the devil leads, you do not want to follow. And the devil could care less about you. He could care the slightest about you. He's the biggest liar. He'll act like he wants to do good for you and tell you all the things he can do for you. Give you things if you're on his side. But he... Is he going to be uh, there helping you when you're burning in hell for eternity? No, because he's going to be there burning himself. And he couldn't help you even if he wasn't. He'd be there laughing at you. Because he's evil. He's Satan. There's nothing good about him. Nothing good about him. He wants to see you fall just like he wants to see God fall and everybody else fall. The reason he's the devil, the reason he's... A bad person the reason he's in hell the reason he was put down to earth is because he wanted to take over God he wanted to be God he wanted to take God's place the devil's name used to be Lucifer and he was one of God's archangels he was one of God's highest angels and they said how beautiful Lucifer was he was the morning the light and morning star he was like God's next and he was like his top angel right there, one of the foremost. And, you know, God loved him, but he wanted to take over God. And the angels that were on his side, they were all cast down to earth, fallen angels. Lucifer wanted to take over God. He wanted to be God. He wasn't happy with just being an archangel. So now he's the devil. Now he's Satan. Satan. 
Okay. So let me go ahead and read Philippians chapter 4, and then we'll read the devotion that goes along with it and see where we go from there. Remember, I'm going to quiz you throughout the video here. Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. Remember, this is written by Paul, Apostle Paul. I pled with Eudia and I plead with Syntech to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Now, what does Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17 say? Your verse for Proverbs. I asked you to remember it yesterday. It's about a friend. It's a short verse about a friend. A friend loves at all times. Remember Proverbs, a friend loves at all times. 1717. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. What does Hebrews, what does your verse from Hebrews say? Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember, that's Hebrews. Now. Now, where we stop at? See, that's where I have a problem. <laughs> Credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Now what does Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 say? I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And we read that here today. You know, it seems like we just done the Bible uh, 
study on this one not too long ago because I know I read this. Um, surely they didn't repeat one in here, did they? But that's the one. Okay. So let me read the devotion now that goes along with it. This devotion is by Isabella Yossico. A friend and I were talking through our ongoing struggle with balancing family, life, personal ambition, calling, and the need to help provide for our family's needs and a few wants. I have worked from home for more than a decade since my first son was born. Like most work at home moms, I know I've struggled with feast or famine income, feelings of isolation versus the freedom to be an integral part of my kids' daily lives and to manage the household. Listening to my fresh round of laminates about the financial and professional sacrifices I'd made by forgiving a nine to five job, or sorry, for forgoing a nine to five job, my friend asked, well, what would make you happy? I had a clear answer. What would make me happy is to not feel the need to ask myself what would make me happy. I realized Jesus is the answer to every longing, whether it's a longing we have the means to fulfill or not. In Philippians 4, Paul urges us to be content whatever God has us to trust him day by day. Now that my boys are both in school, the time may soon come that I'll be led to do something more in support of my financial and professional goals. But just for today, I want to choose contentment and I know that more of Jesus is the only lasting way. Amen. We need to trust in God every day. He puts us in situations for a reason. And sometimes we get in situations from the devil where he's testing us. Because he tells God, God's like, the devil's like, I can get them to turn from you. It's no big deal. And God's like, no, that's my faithful. That's my righteous son or daughter. They are very faithful. They are, you know, a very good person. They will never turn their back on me. For I am their father. And the devil's like, well, you give them this, you give them that, you give them a content life. Take away their home and let them be homeless or, you know, put them in some bad situation. Let something bad happen to them and I guarantee they'll turn from you. So you get tested sometimes. And like all bad things, like I said, come from Satan. There's going to be many times we get tested in our lives, many times. Especially when you're a Christian. it's I'm not saying being a Christian is an easy life because it's harder usually than not being a Christian. Because the devil will give you what you want for you not to be, you know, saved. He's going to make your life even harder if you're not saved. Or if you are saved because he's going to want you to turn from God. But some people will have to make that decision. You know, when they're in that bad situation, when they're being tested, am I going to stay strong and faithful to God and not turn my back on him? Because I know after this test, God will get us through this and everything will get better. Or are you going to let the devil win and turn your back on God? That's the test. It's when you are tested. God never does bad things to you. It's Satan wanting to test you to turn you from God. He's trying to turn you from God. That's why you get tested in those situations like that. That's Satan doing the bad things, not God. Stay faithful and God will get you through it. Okay, now the homework for tonight, if you want to do it, you don't have to. Our faith step homework is this. In your journal or your notebook, make a list. Title it, What Would Make Me Happy? Ask God to help you where you are as he continues to move to you to where you will be. Ask God to help make you content where you are right now. And then 
tell him the things that you would like to do, the things you would like to do in your life, the things that you need, and keep praying for those, asking God for it, and being content right now where you are. And just keep praying to God for what you need and asking for the things you want and need because the Lord knows what we need and what we're going to ask for before we even say anything, before we even say it. But the question is, are you going to come to him in prayer and talk to him about it or not? He's just waiting for you. He's waiting for you to talk to him. All right, guys, one last time before we end the Bible study. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. What does it say? I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loves at all times. And lastly, but not least, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, may be one of the most important. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I hope you guys have a great night's sleep. Good night, guys.